everybody, this is a response to a video by a user called Toby Kid Major, who someone I subscribed to recently, I think, I've subscribed to a few people recently, I think it was a shout out from Karen S, I think it was. Um, she did a video recently about the God Delusion by Dawkins, and talking about the, the bit where he says, uh, goes on about how there's no such thing as a Catholic child or a Muslim child. Um, or whatever, you know, of any, uh, a child can't actually have a religion, basically, they're not old enough to understand it, so uh, we can't really say they're a Catholic child, we can say they're the child of Catholic parents, child being raised in the Catholic faith, but we can't say that they're a Catholic child, because they don't understand what it means to be a Catholic. But of course, this, it's an interesting point I think Dawkins makes there, um, I suppose, yeah, we should, it's sort of true, we couldn't possibly say that. Certainly with their young children, children who are still learning to read and write, who still don't quite know, you know, what a lot of these long, complicated theological words mean. Um, but at what age, I think the point Toby raised was, at what, point, what age do we become capable of knowing what we believe? That's, that's an interesting question. Um, at what age do we, do we become uh, actually capable of saying, yeah, we understand what we believe, because I've met plenty of adults who don't understand their own religion, who said things about their own religion that they don't understand, um, you know, any more than children do. In fact, I've met certain teenagers who understand their religion a lot better than certain adults. So, yeah, it does raise a problem, and it, it's almost like, could we even accuse Richard Dawkins of being guilty of the no true Scotsman fallacy here? I mean, could we say, well, is you know, he's saying all well, that you know, children aren't true, Catholic children aren't true Catholics, or Muslim children aren't true Muslims, or Protestant children aren't true Protestants, etc. But I suppose if you can actually define what the true Scotsman is, then you can say someone's not a true Scotsman. We can say, I'm not a true Scotsman because I'm from England, um, born in England, uh, don't have any direct Scottish ancestry, so we can definitely say, I'm not a true Scotsman. It's not a fallacy. Uh, but it does bring up this question as well of, are, you know, all babies are atheists, this saying which has people very much divided, certainly people in the atheist sort of community online. Um, I actually quite like the phrase all babies are atheists, as long as it's used in the correct sense. I think a lot of people don't quite understand what it's supposed to mean. Basically there's two uh, common definitions of atheism. One is a lack of belief in gods, and another is a belief that there are no gods. And the second one is much more asserted than the first. Um, if we're using the second definition, then no, or babies are not atheists for the same reason they're not Catholics or Muslims or Protestants or Jews or whatever, because they don't have the ability, the, the if you like, the intellect, the developed brain, uh, to be able to understand what that would mean, to be able to form a belief about something like that. But it's a good model, the phrase all babies are atheists is a good model for the, fir the, uh, the first definition of atheism, which is simply a lack of belief. They simply don't have that belief. They also lack belief in lots of other things. You know, they're also uh, non-astrology, non-believers in astrology. Um, and so on. But then some people have extended this to say, well, does that mean rocks and dogs <laughs> or inanimate objects are atheist because they lack the ability to believe? I, I think, I understand where people like that are coming from. I think they're reading a bit too much into, into the term. It's really just an explanation for explaining how atheists don't really have a burden of proof or any re need to explain what they, what they don't believe, why they don't believe. So they don't need to explain why they don't believe in things. They just don't because they don't. There's any number of reasons why they might not believe. They could be, could be because of rational assessment of the information of scripture, or it could just be because they've never heard of it. They've never even heard of scripture. They don't, they've never even heard of the concept of a god or anything like that. And that person would still fall into the, the first definition of atheism, um, but not the second. The second is much more asserted, a much more asserted form of atheism that someone's had to actually come to a conclusion about of their own. So it brings up some interesting points there. Um, I mean, I, I kind of like the God delusion. I'm glad that you, you I think you, you're not treating it like it's a Bible surrogate, which is why some people unfortunately treat it. They treat it like it's the new Bible, 
I think a lot of former Christians or former religious in general who are now atheists seem to see the God delusion as sort of a replacement for the Bible. It's the new book that they just defend against all criticism. They won't hear a word said against. Obviously, that's not what it should be. I don't even think Dawkins would want people to think it was that. It's a, it's a book with someone expressing a fairly informed opinion on a subject and who's taken the time to do that. And that's how it should be taken as someone, you know, someone expressing that opinion on or something like this. Some people have criticised it for having a slant too much towards fundamentalist religion, but if you're an evolutionary biologist like Dawkins is, obviously that's where you're going to find most of your gripes with religion, because it's where religion annoys you the most, it's going to interfere with your work the most, is in its fundamentalist form. So yeah, I just wanted to throw a few thoughts out there. Um, I'll try and post this as a video response, I don't know if you've installed the new video responder yet. Uh, if anyone's not done that yet, by the way, um, a guy called, I think it's called Nightlife78, um, has very kindly put together a bit of a gizmo, a bit of an add-on that you can add to your browser. It works for Opera, Firefox and Google Chrome um, that you can install. I'll put a link in the description and uh, if you install it, you can start using video responses again, um, which is brilliant, which is very kind of him. Um, so yeah, I'll put a link in the description to his video explaining how to do that. Uh, so if anyone wants to install that and get it installed and be sure to tell him thank you very much for sorting that for us that's really good of him to do that but yeah, anyway, let me know uh, what you think if anyone's got any thoughts on that okay, goodbye